So hi boys and girls, I'm Miss Lisa, I'm with the Wayne County Public Library. We have got some exciting interview done for you today. Uh, we are going to be here today with Captain Maximo Money Navarro. He is an F-15 pilot and we are going to talk about his job and what he gets to do all day. Um, and just to point out, what he flies is right behind us, that F-15E. So Captain Navarro. Um, we, I, I get to look up in the sky and see the planes flying really fast and low sometimes, especially over Fremont. <laughs> they make a lot of noise, which is great. Um, but I just, I wonder, is that what you guys get to do all day? Just fly low and fast everywhere? Uh, we can also throw in that we go upside down a lot. Um, but in all honesty, uh, there's a lot more that we do than just fly. So we, it all starts at the ground, really. So we do a lot of uh, ground preparation, a lot of training, mm -hmm. a lot of studying. Um, and then we work with our maintenance team and our crew to, to get the jets ready um, and that way we can take them airborne and then once we're airborne um, that's when we we do get to fly fast we do get to fly low we get to go upside down but um, when we're airborne that's when we focus on a lot of our training um, that's going to help us prepare to uh, go across the world and deploy and then ultimately go to war so uh, we focus a lot on um, air to air a lot of dog fighting if you ever see Top Gun um, and we also focus on a lot of uh, air to ground uh, which is uh, supporting the troops, uh, supporting um, our forces on the ground, escorting them. Uh, so we, we train in all phases of flight uh, pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis. Wow. So which do you, which, which part of your job do you like the most? Is it the flying upside down or? <laughs> it's probably definitely the flying upside down or looking or flying next to clouds. But really, I think the most enjoyable part of the job is knowing uh, when you put it into real life application and when you're, you're able to, to train all these years and you're able to deploy across the world and actually uh, support and help and uh, provide aid. Um, I think that's when you get the most job satisfaction um, and you kind of tie the bow um, at the end of the day from all the hard work you've, that you've done uh, throughout the years. Um, but on a day to day, it's just, it's, dy it's a dynamic environment. It's, uh, it's always a challenge. It's always something new. Uh, so I think that is always like stimulating uh, for, for the mind to just uh, keep it active. So that, those are very enjoyable parts uh, daily. Well, good. Well, okay. Well, now what is the most boring part of your job? Definitely <laughs> the most boring part of the job is when you're not flying. So, uh, like I said, there's a lot of groundwork that comes into it, uh, but some of the groundwork is just uh, your standard paperwork, your standard uh, administrative piece, uh, just doing busy work, so to speak. But um, but that, that is all necessary for us to actually do our job effectively, but every fighter pilot just wants to be in the air at all times. So. That. So um, we've talked about what you like, and we talked about what's well, boring, but what about a dangerous? What's the most dangerous part of your job? I mean, it doesn't get much more dangerous than flying 500 miles an hour on a rocket ship all day, every day. So uh, the job is inherently dangerous. Um, obviously, when we're uh, stateside and we're training, uh, it is dangerous flying close to, next to other aircraft who are also going the same speed as you. And then you also you throw in other factors such as weather um, and then civilian aircraft uh, so there's definitely a lot that's going on um, and then obviously once we leave the united states and we deploy and we go to war then the big danger is the enemy or the person on the other side that does not want us there necessarily so uh, that can be anything from missiles uh, from air to air missiles or air to ground missiles so there's there's a constant threat uh, which is why we focus a lot on uh, safety um, and we and we focus our training on dealing with those threats as well as any kind of emergencies in order to mitigate those dangers and keep the job as safe as possible. Oh, that's great. That's good to know. <laughs> so just that kind of makes me wonder what it would take if I were a lot younger, <laughs> what it would take for me to become a fighter pilot. So I think the big thing is, um, is staying in the books, uh, being able to read uh, a lot and studying a lot because education is probably the biggest piece in order to to achieve that goal to being a fighter pilot. Obviously a college education um, is a must and is a requirement. Um, and I would say that's that's probably the biggest limiting factor um, other than just having a passion to serve and, and a joy for aviation. Um, but really uh, just starting early with, a, with staying in the books and studying and reading constantly. Oh, did you hear that? Reading. <laughs> so um, what kind of equipment does it take to fly a jet? Besides the jet, what kind of equipment does it take to fly the jet? So the jet, it's, uh, it is loaded with 
a ton of advanced uh, technology and we're constantly updating uh, the software, a lot of the computers, a lot of the avionics. Uh, we have a lot of different sensors so that way we can uh, monitor uh, everything going on in the air to air space as well as the air to ground space. Obviously we have a lot of weapons uh, involved, this including missiles and bombs. So um, it's, it's a complete package, especially for the Strike Eagle, uh, which is the fighter that is the most capable for air to air and air to ground. So that allows us to, to do our job um, in, in pretty much all the different environments. Uh, so it's, it's a constantly flowing um, uh, piece of equipment, the jet itself, and then we're always updating it uh, with the latest and greatest technology. Do you have to wear something special before you get in the jet? Oh yeah, we gotta dress up from head to toe, excuse me, from nugget to toe, so to speak. We got a helmet, we have a harness, uh, we have a G-suit, um, and that's uh, those are pretty much our daily equipment um, that's gonna allow us to work effectively and keep us safe in the jet. What's a, can you tell me what a G-suit does for you? Yep, a G-suit's kind of like, a, they call it speed jeans. So basically, uh, as you're going really fast and you're pulling a lot of uh, force and G-forces on you, uh, the G suit's gonna inflate uh, to kind of keep your uh, oxygen and blood around your body where it needs to be so that way uh, you don't fall asleep or black out or G lock in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the jet while you're flying. So it's there to just uh, to keep you safe and keep you healthy uh, while everything's going on. Oh, it sounds kind of uncomfortable though. <laughs> it's not too bad, it's not okay. too bad. Oh, that's good to know. So um, we, since we're at the library, we're wondering, do you have a book that you would recommend for children to read? Yep, two books that were uh, big for me uh, growing up. And what I would recommend is the first one is uh, A is for Astronaut. Uh, so that was um, what uh, inspired me to join the military ultimately so that way I can pursue this dream of trying to become an astronaut um, and that's an easy read because it just goes through the letters A through Z. We hear that you wrote a children's book. Uh, can you tell us a little about it? Yeah, I And did. it will be at the library boys and girls. <laughs> so uh, I wrote a book. Uh, I, I published it actually when I deployed um, last year. Uh, it's called Wooly the Wandering Sheep um, and it's, uh, it's by I, I am the author and then I have my friend Saeed who is the illustrator and the book is just about uh, overcoming obstacles. It's about a, a little sheep uh, that was part of um, a family and then he goes out and decides to explore the world and uh, he runs into some, some trouble and he realizes that um, he can't overcome everything by himself. Um, so then he, uh, he uh, we, won't, we won't spoil the ending, uh, but he's uh, looking <laughs> to, to get out of his troubles. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this sounds really good. I can't wait to uh, get it in the library and check it out for you guys. So um, I read one this week too earlier, and it is the Tuskegee Airmen's Mission to Berlin. I hope you guys got to hear it, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much, Captain Maximo Money Navarro. We really appreciate your time. You took a uh, busy, busy schedule today. And just so you know, um, he landed, what, how long ago like 40 minutes ago yep, yep. so he is just now down from flying this morning so we really appreciate the time you took to come out here and be with us and and uh, get through your debrief and, and meet us and everything so um, thank you so very much thank you. Thanks for having me. and it's very nice to meet you likewise <laughs> likewise